this comes first, always. Namaste. Hello, scholars. It's been a long time since we've got to enjoy this. Um, okay, I promise not to bore you, even though we are talking about farming. I'll try, okay? So uh, I think this really brings us back to our roots of like what we're trying to do in a human geography class. Um, we're, we're trying to figure out where certain human activities exist on the planet. Like that's what this class is meant to do, um, you know, and uh, we get distracted by lots of things, but that's really what we're talking about, right? Like let's go back to lecture one. What is geography? It's two questions, where and why there? And I really think that's what we're trying to do with this. You know, when we talk about farming and agriculture, I think there's like two big, uh, three big fundamental questions uh, or things that we ought to recognize about agriculture. First off, um, I'm probably going to list more than three right now. First off, agriculture is why cities exist. Uh, but we're going to save that lecture for our next unit on cities. Um, the second thing is we want to know just where certain, uh, it's geography, where and why there. Where do certain farming activities take place? Why do they take place there? Uh, the third thing you should know is that it's way bigger of a thing. You, we, we like to think of it as like, you know, the small town farmer with a few acres and three cows and some chickens. But this is big business. This is we're you know, this is the business of feeding seven plus billion people, almost eight billion people now. So there's a lot of effort and a lot of money that goes into this, uh, you know, agriculture industry. And uh, and then the last thing is how how do we feed that many people, right? Can we feed that many people? So we're going to go back and take a little bit more scientific or precise look at um, kind of a Malthusian outlook, um, more from the farming perspective, the science of it, and less from the Malthus perspective, okay? Less, less of the population, more of the farming. Um, but let's talk about where and why there. That's what we're here to do today, okay? And um, there is a dude um, who predicted how this ought to look, um, and he goes way, way, way back in history, okay? Uh, his name is the best. I'm pretty sure it's pronounced Von Tunen, um, but it sure looks like Von Thunen. And... Uh, well, it's time to have some funnin' with von Thunnen, okay? So, Johann Heinrich von Thunnen, uh, he, he lived a whole long, many years ago, uh, 1783 to 1850. Uh, he was uh, a German bloke, a farmer, and an economist, which doesn't sound like they go together, but they actually do. Uh, and way back when, 1826, he wrote a um, he wrote a, an article, uh, a pamphlet or a publication, whatever you want to call it, called the Isolated State. And basically, what he did is he predicted how a city, an isolated, remember the term state, right? If you are all alone, right? And let's go back to like city states, right? Remember city states. Um, if you go back to those city states and you're pretty much you and just you and your group of people within your city, how do you lay out your land? Okay. That's what we're trying to do. So it's a land use model. Uh, it's a little bit of like common sense or applied common sense and a little bit of a, like rent theory as well as like how much you should charge for rent. Um, but let's not get into the economics of it too much, okay? So um, here's what we're going to do today. We're going to try to see if Von Thunen is still relevant today. Remember our last unit, globalization? Uh, this is an isolated state, so is he still relevant? Um, the isolated state is self-sufficient with no external influences. Right there, you're like, yeah, I don't know if this dude's still relevant, but we're going to try. Uh, the state is surrounded by wilderness. Again, I don't know if this dude's still relevant. 
there are no physical features that interrupt land use. Uh, so mountains, rivers, roads. Okay, this guy's really irrelevant. Soil quality and climate are consistent throughout the state. This guy is super irrelevant. Farmers act to maximize profit. Yeah, that's still true. Okay, so he's still got some relevancy. Here's how it ought to work. Okay, so according to Von Tunen, Thunen? Uh, according to Von Tunen, this is how it's supposed to look. At the core, you've got the city right in the center ring. Obviously, you know, uh, let's switch over here. Obviously, uh, land doesn't look like this, but let's just pretend like it does for a while. So at the very center here, you've got your city center. Okay, that's where all your business, your buildings, people live, yada, yada, yada. Cool. Okay, what should be the next ring outside of that? So if we're talking about farming, agriculture, what should be outside of that? Garden vegetables and dairy. He uses, I don't know if you're going to come across this term, but he uses the term truck farming. It has nothing to do with trucks, vehicles. Uh, it's the old, I don't, know, I don't know if it's translated or old English, but truck used to be a term for bartering. So when you go to like a farmer's market and you like trade instead of actually use currency, that's what they talk about when they, if you hear the term truck farming, don't think of like pickup trucks or delivery trucks, okay? So why do the garden vegetables and the dairy, uh, why is that used, uh, that land used for those things right next to the city? Those things spoil quickly, okay? Go check your salad, your spring mix in the fridge. Has it been sitting there for two or three days? Starting to get a little soggy, right? Uh, your dairy, right? This is before refrigeration, but it's still relevant today. You don't want that stuff to spoil. So it's got to get into the city ASAP. And in those days, it was same day delivery. Uh, kind of still the case, right? Next outside of that is forest. And you're like, wait a second. I thought this had to do with agriculture. Yeah, forest, right? You need wood. You need, uh, wood to build with you need wood in those days to burn for energy and cooking and heating and all that stuff but why wouldn't that be on the furthest ring out like why you know like why do we need it right next to us right not just because we like nature but we want it right next to us wood is heavy right have you ever tried to move a tree it's heavy right so the further away it is the more labor intensive it is so therefore, the uh, harder and more expensive it gets. So you kind of need that forest resource, not for nature, but as a resource, relatively close. That one, I don't know if that one's still relevant, but let's keep going with it. Okay, next ring out, field crops. These are all your grains, uh, your wheat, your barley, your corn, whatever else you're, you're growing. For, for two reasons. A, it doesn't spoil, right? If you keep it dry, it'll last a really long time, right? You can keep it in silos and all that cool stuff. The second thing is, uh, remember he's an economist, you have to grow a lot of it. So you need massive open spaces, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of acres. And that stuff is really cheap, right? You don't get, you don't make a lot of money off of farming that kind of stuff. So you not only do you need a lot of it, uh, but you need a lot of it to turn a profit. So you got to get that far away from the city where land is cheap. And the last one, ranching and animal products. For the same reason, you need a lot of land. Do you have any idea how much land it takes to raise like cows, right? You need a lot of land. They need grain to eat. So it makes sense for them to be right next to each other. And here's the morbid thing you don't butcher them out here okay uh ranching and animal products y'all we're gonna eat that stuff right so in those days um you didn't butcher it out here you actually they got they got feet don't they right so you actually walk them in toward the city center where there is a um you know a, a, a butcher where there are butchers a processing center we call it these days um so that's why they're all the way out there. You make them walk to their uh, eventual demise. Sorry, cows. 
Okay, uh, let's talk about economics really quick because this is ultimately about economics, okay? Your city center, that's, that's where rent is. The, this graph is super confusing, okay? Let me just walk you through it really quick. Um, your rent is super high in the city center. There's a lot of money being made. There's a, it's a really high demand uh, area. So rent is gonna be really high in your downtown, your urban center. Still true today, right? Uh, outside of that, dairy, because it has to be so close, it is typically more expensive, right? So your land is more expensive, but then also you charge more for your products, your wheat, your grazing, all that stuff. Um, the, the rent slowly gets cheaper and cheaper and cheaper because A, you need more of it, B, it's further away from the city center, and uh, the, the profit margins for wheat, maybe not beef, but the profit margins for wheat are, are historically pretty slim. Okay, so how does this play out if you've got like this theoretical model, but then you've got like actual geography going in, you can see that there's a river, typically a city is next to a river. So you've got your, um, your city center here, and then everything else kind of on on the periphery kind of playing out like so. Uh, if you've got a major intersection, so if we jump forward to like, you know, freeways and stuff like that, your city center or businesses are going to be near this intersection. It's what we call a nodal point, node. I'm sure you didn't know to that. <laughs> all right. Um, and it all plays out like so. If you've got a small market, this is, um, uh, you haven't heard this term yet, but uh, sometimes there are like big cities and then little cities next to it that are kind of connected. It's called the multiple nuclei model. That's next unit. Uh, and it would look something like this. So they kind of share those resources, but they still have their own, you know, dairy and truck farming right next to it. Okay. So Von, tune in today. Uh, let's take a look at this. Um, as predicted, this is the country of Uruguay. Um, as predicted by Von Thunen. <clears throat> okay. Uh, we lost our... our um, our key. So let's just jump to the next slide. So as predicted, it looks like so. Here's your market gardening, your dairy, uh, commercial grain, uh, and livestock ranching. Okay, and uh, and what do you know? The actual types. It's pretty darn, uh, pretty darn accurate. You know, there's a few you know accounts for like actual geography and actual physical features, but yeah, von Thunen. Tune in. He's he's got it right. Um, in the U.S., let me go to this slide first. In the U.S., so if we assume that like New York and the East Coast, where the bulk of the population is, um, you can see the prediction based off of that. And uh, well, actually, looks pretty accurate, doesn't it? Um, yeah, this is all, you know, this is, uh, you know, the only thing left out, right? It's all, so you got your market vegetables, your truck farming and all this stuff. Uh, we, you know, we didn't talk about our, our cash crops, the things that we don't eat, but, you know, that's in there as well. Uh, and then down here, specialty crops, we didn't really talk about that. Um, we've got a unique climate in, in California and Florida. We can grow all kinds of stuff that the rest of the country can't. That's why we are the, California is the number one producer of agriculture. Um, avocados, oranges, citrus, all that kind of cool stuff that you can't grow where it freezes. So uh, we're, we're pretty special in that way. So let me ask you this. Is Von Tunin still relevant? 1826 or whatever? <laughs> Dude, we live in a globalized, all of our tomatoes, our bananas, we get 33 million bananas coming through San Diego Harbor a year, probably more at this point. Um, and those are all coming from Latin America, right? Um, they're coming up from Colombia or wherever else. Is this dude still relevant? So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to link uh, further in the assignments. Uh, I'm going to link an activity that's going to take you through Southern California and see how we can apply the Von Tunen model to, to us. 
I'm super biased. I love San Diego. I will never move away from San Diego. So everything I do, I kind of frame back in the context of San Diego. Uh, so go ahead and navigate through that. There's probably going to be some uh, follow-up questions and things like that. Uh, but go ahead and uh, go explore that, uh, that uh, Google map, okay? Namaste. Thanks for watching.